Thank you uh, so much. It's a real pleasure for me to be here uh, today, and uh, thank you again for uh, the invitation to come here in Australia. Uh, so uh, the management of uh, RV failure, first, uh, this is my COI slide. I need to one second to go through it. So uh, the first step, you need to know what we are talking about. Uh, what are the etiologies? And uh, here you will have a mix of uh, uh, decreased RV contractility, which is mainly uh, in uh, observing patients with RV infarction or patients with myocarditis. Uh, might be also an increase in pressure overload, uh, as you can see in patients with severe pulmonary embolism, those who have uh, acute or chronic uh, pulmonary hypertension. It might be also in some patients with severe RV failure. And we have all the uh, setting of patients who have uh, lung failure, uh, like we can see in uh, severe ARDS patients, on those uh, also uh, on mechanical ventilation. Might be also volume overload. Uh, in patients who have uh, tricuspid or pulmonic uh, regurgitation, which is not that frequent. And we have patients that have a mix of uh, decreased contractility and increased overload. Uh, you can see these patients, so we have a septic shock, and it's a very specific group of patients uh, after a, a cardiac surgery, uh, with this post vet implantation of heart transplants. It's a very specific group of patients uh, with probably also very specific uh, management. And actually, <coughs> actually uh, when uh, discussing these uh, 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 severe RV failure, it's a, a vicious circle uh, leading to aggravated uh, RV failure uh, with uh, RV uh, uh, pressure overload and decreased contractility uh, leading to uh, 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 arrhythmia, uh, ischemia, uh, inflammation, injury, increasing oxygen demand, uh, decreasing coronary perfusion, and at the end, uh, <clears throat> leading to a decrease in cardiac output, severe hypertension shock, and death uh, if uh, a correct management uh, is not uh, performed uh, uh, in a timely manner. Uh, so when I take care of such patients, Doppler echocardiography is critical uh, to diagnose uh, the disease, to evaluate the severity of the disease, and to also to guide the treatment. Uh, there's a very nice paper published a couple months ago in the European Journal of Heart Failure summarizing uh, the steps uh, you might follow uh, in the care of these patients. So uh, first, the step-by-step -step Doppler echo analysis. <coughs> you will have dilation of the uh, right ventricle leading to a tricuspid regurgitation. And usually, if the uh, uh, RV failure is severe, uh, the uh, velocity of the tricuspid regurgitation will be over 2.8 meter per second. Uh, you might also measure uh, the tri tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, TAPSI, uh, which, should, which should be over 16, 17. When severe RV failure occurs, it will be decreased below 17. Of course, the RV is going to dilate, and uh, <coughs> the uh, dimension uh, <clears throat> the ratio of the RV and diastolic to uh, uh, LV and diastolic will be over 1, and the RV bas basal uh, diameter also will be uh, over 41 millimeter. Uh, RV fractional area will be decreased, uh, and uh, the major sign here is also uh, ventricle interdependence with a septal shift. I uh, will show you that uh, a minute uh, later. And the last uh, uh, point also uh, which might be measured uh, using tissue Doppler is the velocity of the tricuspid annulus, the systolic velocity, which is also a very sensitive uh, barometer of severe RV failure and usually should be over 10. In those patients, with severe RV failure will be decreased uh, below 9.5. It's one also of the uh, criteria to diagnose uh, severe RV failure. Uh, and this is the point here. Uh, the heart is constrained in the pericardial sac and when you're going to have a dilator RV, the dilator RV is going to push the LV away. The septum will be flattened. And uh, if the uh, heart failure is very severe, uh, you're going to have a decrease in uh, cardiac index and severe shock. It is here uh, echo images uh, showing this, this uh, flattening of the septum and the in, uh, massive increase in RV size. You might also diagnose that. Uh, using a CT scan, uh, for example, in patients who have severe uh, pulmonary embolism. 
So what should be the management of these patients with severe RV failure? Should be always first treating the underlying disease. You might think about volume optimization and hemodynamic support. Back to this uh, very good paper, first assess severity. Uh, you need to evaluate the patient. Biochemical lactate is very important here. Imaging, once again, echo is a fundamental. CT scan might be also important. You have to identify and treat the triggering factors and especially think about a specific etiology. Is it myocardial infarction with uh, RV involvement? These patients should be uh, uh, directed to the cat lab and have early PCI, or um, they might get a very rapid reperfusion if uh, this is the case of uh, uh, massive pulmonary embolism. Fluid should be optimized. Uh, in some situation, you might remove fluid. In some others, like in severe uh, acute myocardial infarction or pulmonary embolism, you might uh, give a little bit of fluid of the patient. Uh, and uh, all these patients should be cared, of course, in, in the ICU with close monitoring. Uh, drugs, uh, first line should be norepinephrine to maintain uh, arterial pressure. Uh, I will talk about the inotropes you might use. Uh, also, it might some, some drugs which might be used to decrease uh, the uh, L, uh, RV afterload to decrease the primary artery pressures like inhaled uh, nitric oxide, prostacycline. And then uh, the, when everything has failed, uh, you need to think about mechanical support devices. So drugs very rapidly, uh, probably uh, norepinephrine should be the first choice now. There's some data showing that it's much better and that the butamine might be also better than adrenaline, uh, so it should be first line. Uh, other drugs, uh, inotropes, uh, there was some hope with levosimandan. This is an old uh, paper showing that it improved the uh, ventricular uh, 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 unloading and it's Im improved also the, uh, the contractility of the right ventricle in patients with severe RV failure uh, in the uh, ARDS uh, 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 syndrome. Uh, but still, we lack good evidence, large trials showing that it's uh, strong benefits. It's all the uh, latest has been negative with lemonsimanan. Should be tested uh, in specific RV failure patients, uh, though. Nitric oxide, uh, very useful in post-heart surgery patients. Uh, those who have heart transplant, those who have VADs. Uh, and uh, it improved the uh, cardiac uh, resistance, decreased the pulmonary artery uh, resistance. It increased the cardiac output. It might also increase... Uh, the PF ratio might be useful in patients with the most severe forms of ERDS uh, to improve the oxygenation uh, until uh, a, a device might be uh, uh, inserted. Prostanoid, pretty much the same effect uh, as well. Sildenafil, uh, which might be used uh, second line. We use that uh, drug uh, in heart transplant patients or VAT patients, uh, especially uh, in those uh, uh, who want to win from the inhaled nitric oxide, it's much less efficient, that nitric oxide, but uh, uh, it might be used uh, after uh, uh, these patients have been weaned uh, from uh, nitric oxide. Special word about mechanical ventilation. Uh, mechanical ventilation is bad for the right ventricle because it increases RV, RV afterload due to the positive pressure. It might have a strong hemodynamic impact, uh, especially in those patients who have a hypercapnia baseline. Uh, it's going to increase the mean arterial pressure, pulmonary arterial pressure, if you increase the tidal on the PEEP. Uh, this is uh, very interesting data uh, showing that uh, there is a rise, increase in the uh, pulmonary vascular resistance. If you increase the PEEP, you should read the heart study published in JAMA a couple of days ago uh, about the impact of very, very high PEEP as a recruitment maneuvers in patients with severe ARDS showing that it increases mortality, uh, probably because it has a strong impact on the right ventricle and those patients receive higher levels of uh, catecholamines uh, and uh, the, because probably there was a higher pressures uh, imposed on the right ventricle. So it is, should be aware of that, should protect the right ventricle doing uh, a mechanical ventilation in these patients, protect uh, the RV by decreasing the tidal, avoid hypercapnia, keep plateau pressure as low as possible, maybe lower than 27, maybe lower than 25. Should also have a look at the driving pressure. PEEP should be adjusted. Maybe some patients might benefit from higher PEEP, but most patients should benefit from PEEP between 10 and 15, not higher than 15 uh, for sure. Prone positioning increases uh, the PF ratio and is also very good uh, for the, the right ventricle, uh, as been shown in uh, uh, recent papers. Then uh, last point. 
mechanical uh, assistance might be the last resort. ECMO, for sure, should be first line now uh, because it's a biventricle support. Uh, it's uh, easy to set up even at the bedside. Uh, it might be only percutaneous, even for VA. It's low cost compared to other uh, types of devices. No need for stenotomy, no need for complicated surgery. Uh, might be very useful in the setting of RV uh, myocardial infarction. Uh, these are data from uh, uh, last decade showing that the prognosis of severe RV failure in the setting of acute MI uh, is as uh, bad as those patients who have uh, uh, LV failure, uh, actually. So uh, these are data from our group showing that it's possible to rescue the most severe form of myocardial infarction refractory, uh, including patients who have uh, uh, RV failure. Catastrophic pulmonary embolism might be also a very good indication for those who have the deadly form of uh, pulmonary embolism, uh, those who might die, those who have already had cardiac arrest, those who have severe shock, uh, and we might use ECMO uh, in these patients to stabilize uh, before going to uh, a surgical embolectomy or catheter-based embolectomy, but I do believe that even for those patients, we might not need these type of uh, 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 severe, uh, th these type of uh, intervention. We might use ECMO just as a sole, unique, definitive therapy, uh, providing uh, 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 cardiac support and uh, allowing time for the clot to dissolve with heparin. And this is what we did in uh, 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 17 patients. We published that a few uh, weeks ago in critical care, and uh, we had very good results. Uh, half of the patients who were dead, almost dying with severe pulmonary embolism, and half of them uh, su survived to uh, ICU discharge. Specific point now, uh, those who got uh, left VAD, uh, they might have severe RV failure for a VAD insertion, and when the patient has severe RV failure following VAD in, uh, uh, insertion, the prognosis is pretty bad. Uh, so there might be solutions for them. ECMO might be one of these solutions. You might go for regular peripheral VA, ECMO, or uh, there is alternative strategies. Uh, this is one of the strategies we use from time to time. We use the drainage inserted percutaneously into the IVC with the tip in the right atrium, and we use a dacron graft, which is attached to the pulmonary artery, and the dacron graft is passed through the uh, subxifoid exit here, where it's connected to uh, the ECMO machine to the re-injection from the ECMO machine, uh, uh, and it's only percutaneous, except for the dacron, which is inserted in the uh, 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 pulmonary artery, and the, when the patient can be weaned from the machine, you just cut uh, the graft, suture the graft, and uh, suture the skin, and that's it. No need for repeat surgery. You let the graft in place uh, until the patient gets a transplant. First solution. Second solution here, uh, only percutaneous this time, same strategy for drainage, uh, the tip in the right atrium, and for reinjection, we pass uh, a, a catheter, a cannula, from the jugular vein into the pulmonary artery, only percutaneous. Uh, there is another solution which is not mentioned here, it's a cannula called the Protect Duo. You might use as a single cannula uh, for RV support. Same for heart transplant, very similar indication here, and much better results than in the past using that type of strategies. Uh, patients might have a primary graft failure, and they might have also RV dilation following transplant, which might be cured by the ECMO, uh, at least waiting uh, one week, 10 days, for the RV to adapt to the new uh, regimen of pressure. ARDS, I talked to you about ARDS. Many of those patients with the most severe form, they have severe RV failure. In those patients, you do not need VA support. You will only need VV support. It will, it will solve the problem within minutes uh, because uh, uh, if you uh, perfuse highly oxygenated blood within the pulmonary arteries, it will decrease the hypoxic vasoconstriction and it will solve the RV failure problem within minutes. Uh, this is the results of the CISA trial, as you uh, remember. Last point for the future, uh, there's a new uh, device coming to the market. It's called the Impala RP. It's a specific uh, RV pump uh, which it's inserted through the uh, uh, femoral vein into uh, the uh, right atrium, left, uh, right ventricle, and then into uh, the pulmonary artery. And it's a specific RV uh, support device. It's been published a few reports here. It's uh, the first experience in patients with acute MI. And here it's a series 
uh, of uh, 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 30 patients, I 18 post AZ, 12 post uh, acute MI, cardiotomy post transplant, showing that it's possible for these patients to increase the cardiac index, decrease the CVP, uh, not a lot of evidence about the long-term outcome of these patients, the winnability, and the main problem of that pump is the cost. Uh, it's close to 15,000 euros, probably more than 20,000 Australian dollars, very expensive. But the concept is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is good. So this is my two last slide. First is an invitation. I'm the uh, chairman of the uh, Euro ELSO. Uh, it's going to be a nice congress in Prague in uh, May, so please come to Prague at that time. And the last one is uh, about our Congress in Paris. Uh, it's also an invitation to come to Paris uh, late June, uh, uh, where we have our uh, yearly uh, TCS ECMO Congress. Thank you so much.